Hey folks, welcome back to Green Iron TV. Today we're going to look at something that uh, quite often is misunderstood uh, with the military vehicles, and that's the M series light switch. What it does, what it turns on, um, how it operates the headlights, marker lights, and the blackout lights. So we're going to handle that here today on Green Iron TV. So, like always, please give us a like, leave a comment. Hit the subscribe button and while you're at it take a moment in the link down below check out the merch store check out all the cool green iron shirts we got we got t-shirts sweatshirts hats uh, stickers all kinds of cool stuff like that down there in the green iron store so uh, please check that out and uh, sit back because that's what we got going on today Okay, so what we have here is your standard M-series headlight switch. So this headlight switch was common uh, throughout all the M-series vehicles and is actually still used today, although the new one today is uh, all push button. So this is the older style. And there was actually two versions of this uh, that had different plugs on the back, Canon plugs. Uh, outside looks the same, functions the same. It was just how they plugged in. Uh, some of the earlier M38A1s uh, and early Dodge M37s had that uh, different plug on it. Uh, pretty much everything from the mid-50s back um, has the standard series with the one big cannon plug on it. So uh, the biggest thing and biggest problem is people don't understand what all the uh, levers do and the positions do. So of course there's several different positions and the main thing is the off position. So in the off position, which is straight up, we have no headlights, no tail lights, no brake lights, no anything. So when the lights are off, there are no lights operating at all. Now, when you uh, go out on the street and you want brake lights, so, you know, this is all a safety feature so that, you know, in the military, in combat situations, when you don't want brake lights to be able to give you away, you want uh, you can turn it to the off position and, of course, keep from showing brake lights. So the one important thing is that there is the lock switch. So this is a lock, and just like it says on it, there unlock and you lift it up. So right now, you can you can move it to the blackout positions, but you cannot move it to uh, the the other positions uh, and that's a safety that's to keep you from bumping it in combat conditions and turning the lights on so if you turn it to you lift it up and go over one click you are now in service stop all right and so what that does is that gives you the ability to have brake lights Okay, and so you have no headlights, no running lights, just brake lights right now. From there, you can unlock and go one more click into drive. And so that's going to give you headlights, tail lights, and brake lights.
you do not have any type of marker lights on the front uh, other than turn signals. And then from there, you can go, you also then go back to the off. You then can go, you can go into the blackout side. So you can go to blackout and that's blackout stop. And so now only the stoplight and blackout works. And then from there, you can unlock and go to blackout drive. And so now your blackout driving light is on. All right. So this is the blackout drive light. And this is a very dim light. It is shaded from the top so that you can't see it looking down at it. It is shaded actually from the front. So that you can't see it the only way you can see it is looking up from underneath and what this light will do is it shines out and it only shines maybe five six feet out in front of the vehicle and in total darkness that's all you can see is about five feet in front of you and at blackout driving conditions uh, at night you're going to be going super super slow and so you can only see five feet in front of you, and that's how much distance you have to see what you're doing. So what we have here in the blackout marker light is you can see the two distinct sets of lines. And the way this is designed is if you are traveling at the right distance behind this vehicle and you're looking, so if you can see the two sets of lines, that means you are too close. But if you're back off and you're the right distance, it should all look like one basically dot. So you would have a dot and a dot, and that would tell you you are at the proper distance. If you're too far away, then you won't be able to see them at all. So that's how these marker lights work and then so we can turn them all back off here so then on your other switch here so you have your your switch here so you have several different spots here along this switch and so when you're in the drive position so you have panel dim and so the gauge lights come on dim and you have panel bright which is going to uh, illuminate those a little bit brighter so I'll turn the lights off here in a second and you'll be able to see the difference between those gauges the gauges are not super super bright um, and then the last you have is you have park, which is down to the bottom. So if you go into park, so what that's going to do is that's now going to put all your parking lights on. So your front markers and your rear taillights are now on, but your headlights are off. Okay, so with the lights on, you can go to panel dim. And you see that faint red glow around the gauges there. And then you can also go to panel bright. And it makes it a little bit brighter. You can see a little bit better. And of course, you do have your high beam indicator comes on. And if you notice, it does have just a little bit of a red glow. And then, so those red lights okay that's what's behind these caps 
So these caps uh, have that light and it shines out and through the sides of all the gauges. And that's what gives the gauges their illumination. So here, let me grab, grab a gauge and we'll show you how that light shines into a gauge. So as you can see, these gauges, they have this clear out around the edges. You can see all the way through. And so that's where that illuminating light shines through to illuminate the gauges. That's how they did backlit gauges on military vehicles back in the day. So here on the M38A1, same thing on that blackout light. It's tucked way up underneath there. And of course, what's unique on an M38A1 is you only have taillight and brake light on one side of the vehicle. And on the other side, you have the blackout brake light and blackout marker lights as well. So you only have blackout bark, blackout brake on one side and regular brake and taillight on the other side. Kind of unique. Well, folks, that's going to wrap up this episode of Green Iron TV. I know it was a quick one, uh, but it is a subject that I know uh, I get a lot of questions on all the time. Uh, I see it on a lot of the forums, a lot of the message boards. People trying to figure out how to work the M-Series light switch, what all the positions do, uh, and how it works on their vehicle. So hopefully you found this bit of information helpful um, as you, you know, explore your military vehicles. Um, and like always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment. Uh, I try and read all the comments and respond to, as best I can to all the comments. So please do that. And like always, you know, give us a like. And if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, that way you can follow along for all our good Green Iron Madness. Uh, we have gotten to that point in the year where it is winter here. Um, snow's on the ground. Roads are icy. They've salted the crap out of everything here in Michigan. Um, the vehicles aren't going to leave the garage more than likely, other than a couple times in the winter to uh, warm them up. I do like to get them out, run them for a half hour, 45 minutes each out and outside in the yard, uh, let them warm up, burn that condensation out of the motors uh, and get all the fluids mo moving. So that's what, uh, that's what our plans are. We're, like I said, we don't have a lot to work on here in the cold. Uh, you know, not much can be done uh, as far as paint or any type of things like that. So, um, you know, like, like last winter videos are probably going to be pretty, pretty sparse from us here through the uh, winter months, but, uh, hang on spring will be here soon and we'll be back to working on some vehicle restorations. So in the meantime, thanks for watching and we hope you have a great day.